December the 24th, 1979, at Europe spaceport in Kourou, French Guiana, Ariane takes off for the first time. This is the beginning of 40 years of launches, securing an independent access to space for Europe. This allows Europe also to develop its own programs in space. This sovereignty in space became a priority for Europe with the launch of a French-German satellite symphony by NASA. I know the symphony story very well because uh, we called it the symphony shock. Um, what happened uh, that France and Germany, it was a French-German cooperation, built the symphony. And due to the failure of Eldo, uh, uh, France and Germany had to decide to use an American launcher. And the shock came when the, when the satellite was in the United States. Uh, uh, NASA said, well, we can launch the satellite, but you cannot use it commercially. And this, I believe, created uh, more conviction that Europe has to be independent. So the, uh, the symphony shock was a positive shock, creating more, more motivation. And so the development of Ariane began. Even though the second launch was a failure, ESA and CUNES continued to further develop the Ariane launches, learning from the mistakes of the past and turning the Ariane program into a success story for the European industry. Ariane 1 was followed by Ariane 2 and Ariane 3, more powerful and slightly different versions of Ariane 1. Ariane 3 was fitted with strap-on boosters. With Ariane 4, ESA and Ariane Space, the company created to commercialize Ariane, had an extremely versatile launcher with six configurations. It was a workhorse for the space industry and was even able to capture 50% of the commercial launcher market. Between 1988 and 2003, it made no less than 113 successful flights. Then Ariane 5 became Europe's heavy lift champion in use since 1996. Ariane 5 is an absolutely great story. We launched all the ATVs with Ariane 5. We had several missions for Galileo. We launched uh, great scientific missions like Bepi Colombo. And we recently launched the 250s launch of Ariane. With the 106 successful launches of Ariane 5, the Ariane program has been one of the most reliable launcher programs in history, proving Europe remains at the forefront with reliable technology. For Europe, innovation and creativity have been the keys to conquer its place in the worldwide launcher market. While the Ariane launchers were adapted to transport ever larger payloads, such as the ATVs, Europe did not forget about the lighter and smaller payloads. It updated its launcher portfolio with Vega, a cheaper, lightweight launch vehicle, to also capture this segment of the market. Soon Vega will be joined by Vega C, a larger and more powerful version of the rocket with its first launch planned in 2020. Then the next step will be Ariane 6, that will replace Ariane 5 and consolidate Europe's position in the satellite launch market. Ariane 6 will come in different configurations, with two or four boosters. It will also be cost-efficient, through a clever design with horizontal assembly, and it will be tailored to the needs of the customer. Its maiden flight is scheduled for the end of 2020. It's a great success story for Europe overall. It's paving the way for the fourth dimension of space transportation, but even more than space transportation, transportation overall for society and I'm really happy to have today all the results in hand to make Europe even stronger again. United Europe in space without this any borders. At the recent the ESA ministerial, ministerial conference in Seville, borders. Spain, the That's ESA member nice states have once more stressed the importance no of space transportation in with the Ariane program and greenlighted the development of Space Rider. This reusable autonomous re-entry vehicle will return to Earth after each mission. ESA will therefore have all the tools for a secured access to space for multiple missions in any orbit.